continue what has been going on over here is very, very well, all this good networking, but also to hear from a great speaker today to impart information that will help you and uh, personally, but also professionally. And that's what we're here to help you do, to equip you and to encourage you and support you in what you're doing. As I just said, you know, we're here an opportunity to create an opportunity for you to grow. And uh, it's always fun every week. It's always someone different, and that's fun because uh, our lives are all different, right? So one week we might really get an aha for you, and that's what we're always hoping for uh, for you. Our speaker today is Nathan Stadler. He'll be sharing a sustaining financial growth. Uh, I think we all want that, or maybe we all have that, right? I don't know if we all do, but uh, he's going to give some tips and some pointers and some ideas of what you can maybe apply in your business as well as your personal life. And we meet every <coughs> every Monday, except we got uh, November 11th coming up next month for Veterans Day, so we won't be meeting there. And you're all are welcome, uh, because who knows, someone might like you better than the other person who's in the same business or services that you are, right? And so that's why it's great to have more than one of us in the same business. It's totally fine. Right. No attendance taken, but I will see you here next week. <laughs> As I said, uh, what we look for is our speakers to uh, uh, share expertise in educating and informing us. But we're also starting something new, or at least we're going to play with it and then see how it works. But right now, it seems like it's pretty exciting about uh, some update, upcoming uh, events we're going to do here at Professor Connections, where we're inviting two to three people to share on their business or services. And we've already got two uh, Mondays scheduled for that to happen. And so, uh, but we still want to educate and inform you, but it's just we're doing a little twist different than what we've normally done. And so you'll be seeing it actually next week. So we'll come back and then see how we're changing things up a little bit. Just have some fun and uh, enjoy <coughs> the network. <coughs> and if you are the one that wants to speak for us on a Monday or in that group uh, or in the future and you know someone from outside networking in other places, please connect with one of us three. And we'll get you on the calendar and get you going. We still have openings uh, in November, I think one or two in November. In December, we're, we're not meeting every Monday in December because of the Christmas, right? And uh, but we'll, December's open for right now. Yeah. So uh, uh, if you didn't do it yet, please uh, go ahead and put your cards or business, you know, cards or flyers or any other announcements that you might be involved in on the table here. So we may uh, pick it up and, and, and use it. To, and also add you to our uh, list of people we get to know. And if you haven't done it yet, please give your business card to Brad back here at the camera. He will put you on our email list so you can be informed another way of what's coming up. And then I'm trying to keep up to date. I'm so far, I think I'm good through the end of the year. I'm putting on the Facebook events. Uh, and if you're not in that, the group of invites so you're getting that notice through Facebook, uh, let me know and I'll I'll get you on, but just, we're just trying to let you know what's coming up and what's going on. Restrooms up the door here to the right, and you'll see them right there. So right now, I just ask that you all rise and join me, if you please, as we do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So today, as I said, our speaker is Nathan. He's been doing his bookkeeping business now for five years, uh, three years as a business partner in, in lawn and landscaping. And he's also got more, but uh, that's one of them that he's doing. And then he has two years of building his own company. So he's got some experience here and some uh, uh, great things he's learned in, uh, under the, his belt in the last few years. He has a passion to help businesses find stability in their finances to see them grow, grow and flourish. His wife, Emily, have three furry kids, <laughs> a cat and two guinea pigs. Please help me, Nathan. Well, sometimes I'm long-winded, sometimes I'm not. So, the thing I want, if you get anything out today, the thing I want to talk about is saving. How to sustain growth in an unstable society. I mean, the, the, the unstable equation. Every time you put people in the means that a business depends on, you're going to get instability. 
people flake out. They make contrary decisions <laughs> that may destroy your life and theirs. People are that unstable equation. In all financial plans, I mean, even I could be that unstable equation. Um, two plus two equals four. You give it up somebody, well, I feel that should be six or seven. But it's an unstable equation. Uh, financial roller coaster. Going off is exciting. You are feeling the rush. Your business is picking up. You're getting excited. Then you have that sudden drop. The good months, people are buying your product or service. You think all is good. You start making plans based on an uncertain future. You're positive and you're excited. Then the bad months come. They will they will they will come. Doesn't look good. Sometimes it looks sometimes oh <laughs> no, I got it right. You got it right. You got it right. So, uh, <laughs> the bad ones, they will come. Doesn't look good. Looks kinda like the dark side of the moon. People stop buying. Automatic payments stop due to no funds. You lose a client. That can be harsh. You lose a client or two and you get it through it. Well, one thing I want to talk about, well, one thing I hark on all my customers and all my clients is building up a saving muscle. It's more like a memory muscle. Um, you can't see this muscle, you can't touch it, but it's something you depend on when the bad months come. Your car gets towed. The government decides not to give you money back in taxes. I mean, that never happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> A client makes a bad decision with their money and then has no money for you. Boom. Profitable and unprofitable times. Now this seems like a contradiction to being profitable in unprofitable times. I mean, how, can I, how can I be making money when I'm not making money? How, that doesn't make any sense. Well, the idea is to have money in your account during the <coughs> That way you can draw on it during the bad months. Then you have money to help you until the good months come. Because they will come. Boop. Percentages. Now, this is one thing I took from a book that I read. I really love it. It's called Profit First. Uh, he takes 1%. And he wants us to start slow if you don't know, if you don't already save. Some of us do, but start slow. I mean, I love saving. When I was, when I was first saving, I, you know, put money into savings and I leave there and then don't think about it and I won't put anything else in there. Well, by the time a bad time comes, I realize I don't have enough in there. I didn't really save. Well, what this is, start with one percent of your revenue. Put that in an account called profits. Uh, if you already have a percentage, if you are saving, good for you. Um, find out what percentage that is, and then add 1%. Do that for three months. And now in the third month, sit down. Ask yourself, can I add another percent to that? So another three months, you have 2%. Well, what this does is it starts building up. You start getting a habit of saving. And you try doing third month percentages. Ooh. Two things this account provides. It provides a peace of mind. I mean, you could pull up the financial P&L statement if you can understand that. And you can look that up if you want. But to be able to open up your bank account, find your profit account and see, hey, there's money in that. You start feeling safe. You start feeling secure and confident. The same thing I say every day safe, secure, and confident. And that is important when you're building a business. You want to feel safe. You want to feel confident. The second thing it does is it's an emergency fund. You have that ability to stay profitable in unprofitable times. That's why you call it a profit account. <coughs> Hence the name profit. Let's see if I have anything else. Oh, other things you can do with it. 
three months, take about 50% out of that and go celebrate. And congratulate yourself for, you know, I have built up a saving fund and I feel good. So take about 50% off, go buy yourself, maybe your wife, your husband, go celebrate. And then leave the rest of the 50% in there for the time to build up. Now, that is basically, I'm kind of, Hmm? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, any questions? <laughs> Concerns? <laughs> I was kind of short with yes. I have a question, but I, I, I ran into a wise old guy that hired me way back when I was uh, in my twenties, and, and he said, if you don't have three months put away, mm -hmm. your expenses. You're basically broke because any any one little thing that came along could literally bankrupt you. But at that point, we'd already bought a house and stuff. Yeah. And so he said you need to have three months in reserve. And it kind of went along with the three months that you were talking about here. Yeah. But we had found at that point once we accomplished that. I went back home and told my wife that, and so we thought well, that sounds reasonable. We're in our twenties now, right? Mm -hmm. Very impressionable. So we got to three months, by the way, and we thought well, that was kind of fun. So we decided to go for six. <laughs> So we got the six put away and we went and decided to go for a year. Yeah. And so it just be mm -hmm. it became more fun counting it than it, it did, did spending it. <laughs> it did. <laughs> you know? So, Scrooge. yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it, yeah, people need to put away, whether you call it a profit account or whatever you want to yeah. call it, put they account. need to put away. But uh, I, get, I think 95 or better percent don't. You mm. know? Yeah. And Sometimes the reason is, you know, I got expenses. I kind of pay these things. Do I have enough? This is why I say start slow. I mean, one percent of a hundred is one dollar. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that there. That's not going to affect anything. So, <laughs> start small. Don't just throw everything in there. Make sure you have the expenses paid for, it and put that away. When you were reading, was there any guidance on what account to put money into? Oh, you know. And not, it doesn't matter if it's a savings or a checking. I mean, the idea here is not to gain interest. The idea here is to, to create a stability, to create something that you can count on when the bad things come. <laughs> I was just going to piggyback on your statement. Um, I know it sounds good, like you should put that away. And when you're young, you're like, really? But we did, my husband and I did that, and you know, when the recession hit, we actually had enough money in the savings where we, every month, we would draw on that and we made it. People were like, how are you guys doing it? I mean, our neighbors were like, yeah. but um, we did because we had that, and so we had a little bit of money coming in, but we just drew on that every month. I guess that was before the kids were in college. If they were in college, we would have been hosed, but um, it really, I think it does benefit, no matter how small or big it is. Yeah. It, it got us through. It does, and our personal, um, basis, it does benefit. I don't know if you've heard Dave Ramsey and his emergency son. Mm -hmm. Well, this is basically do the same thing for your business. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should reflect your personal account. Sometimes one thing, one thing it does, I've noticed, is the business reflects the owner's personal habits. Mm -hmm. And if you have a personal habit of saving, your business is going to have a personal habit of saving. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, so a lot, a lot of people who are business owners, they're, like you were mentioning, their revenue is mm -hmm, sporadic, partially. right? So yeah. do you have them um, like sit down once a month and kind of see where they're at for that particular month to see what their profit is so far? Or how do they, I guess, how do they figure out what their profit is ongoing rather than just like wait till the end of the year and go, okay, our yeah. profit ended up being $25,000? Yeah, I would encourage them down once a month. Once a month, okay. Because it does, it, for some people, it does fluctuate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to find that average of the fluctuation and prepare for the average. Um, not at the end of the year, oh, shit. I, yeah. <laughs> <I'm ready>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's, if anyone else has questions, yeah. Why do you recommend only 1%? That seems like a pretty low percentage. It is a low percent, but for those who haven't, saved, um, they don't have that habit of saving. And if you can do 2%, good, but you got to make it consistent. 
Um, if, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, if you take, let's say, it's realistic to eventually expect 10%, say 10% yeah. of your income. But if you tell somebody, say 10%, they may, I can't do that. Right. But if you do 1%, 1%, um, and then eventually the team. Actually build up. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, uh, the hard discipline is to sit on your client, force them, make them, push them, whatever it takes to take money out for savings, and let them run out of money before the end of the month and then they'll get it that their budget needs to come into line with savings plus expenses um, I guess the majority of my clients seem to have to have gone that way uh, to learn that lesson but that one percent you know they'd save it yeah. one month and spend it the next while they were saving it until they got their budget yeah. kind of in line. Um, so that uh, gives me an idea that um, w we have an open speaking engagement. I think I'll um, do a summary of Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman without the drama. <laughs> so I'll just throw that out. We'll pursue this a little bit more, maybe in a panel. So that would be fun. Well, my mouth is dry. I think that is basically all I have. About. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Some of you may not know. I'm going to keep you up here. Oh. <laughs> Some of you may not know, but this yeah, is the second time here, Nathan's so. actually got up and spoken in front of people. So uh, I'm proud of him because uh, he's nervous, like all of us are, but he did a great job. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. There you go, Nathan. Follow Nathan on LinkedIn, but he has amazing content on his LinkedIn. I actually asked, I didn't mean to offend you, but I was like, Do you pay someone for your LinkedIn? Because yes. it's phenomenal. And he's like, No, I do it myself. <laughs> so, anyway, it, it's of the people that I know who pay someone to do their LinkedIn's, it's right up there. I thought for sure that you paid someone to do that. So, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. And, and this is, it's been fun to watch Nathan uh, grow his business as well as his personal, you know. And, uh, so appreciate your questions and thoughts. And I think, uh, Jeremy, I, so I work a little bit in habits with people, you know, yeah. a little bit. And uh, his suggestion, you know, like what your thought is, uh, is that maybe two steps or three steps or, you know, percentage would be great for you. Uh, but what I found in working with people is sometimes that 1%, like Brad was saying, that is just like, you're kidding. I mean, I can do that maybe, but don't give me that 10% because they won't do it. Right. Or, or they'll do it and they'll quit. And so to get that momentum going and like you said, develop that habit, yeah. well then, this is like you were saying earlier, this is so much fun. It's like, why not do 3% next month and, or the next, like you were saying, the next three months or six months. So I, your, your question's great, but not everyone's going to be like that. And like uh, Brad was saying, some, some people, or if it's you or someone you know, some of them need a kick in the booty, mm -hmm. and other ones need, come on, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> and it just depends on each one. And yeah. So I think he's being general, but uh, yeah, it's a great question. It's though. like running a marathon. No, it, forget it. You don't start with 10 miles. No, you can <laughs> start with one step at a time. I was going to add to that, too. It, uh, we were just talking about this, but I have adult kids, and one of the things I did was sat down with them. My daughter got married, she was 18, so her husband was 19. So I showed them what $100 a month in a Roth IRA would look like for them at age 65. Mm -hmm. And they looked at me and went, are you kidding me? We have an extra, each of them had an extra $100 a month. We could do that. Okay, great. So we did it. And then just recently, she's not working. She's going to school. And I said, do you want me to reduce your amounts? Because they didn't have enough money in like 40 bucks until the 15th or something. And I said, do you want me to reduce your amount to like $50 a month until you get your, you know, and find another job? And she goes, no. We'll be fine. We're okay. Don't change that. Like you know what I mean. So I think part of this too is is when we show people, not everybody, because some people can show all day and they won't do anything. But when you show, especially the younger people, it's only this much, and this is what you're going to have at 65. They're like, I'm going to have over a million dollars. Are you kidding me? So that's another thing with the business owner to show them is long term what that could look like. Like if they can do one percent, but you show them what ten percent would look like for them down the road, it gives them something to shoot for. 
Well, I think like a little bit what he did and what you're saying is 